Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. This is the Acquia podcast. Today's conversation is with a colleague of mine from Acquia, and we're going to be talking about something that I've thought a lot about over the years um, and has been a relatively significant part of my career on and off. We're going to be talking about diversity, and specifically diversity in hiring. And in the tech industry, it uh, remains a hot topic and remains a, something of a problem throughout open source and technology in general. And small event recently at Acquia inspired me to get on this uh, hangout and talk with one of my colleagues about exactly what's been going on. I'm really, really excited to be talking with Chris Hamburger. Chris, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so, so my name is Chris Hamburger. Um, I have been at Acquia for uh, nearly four years at this point. Um, which relative to the rest of the workforce here makes me a, a bit of a veteran, a bit of a grizzly veteran. Um, my title here is um, Senior Manager of Business Development and Sales. Um, <laughs> what that actually means, though, is that I uh, hire uh, folks for our business development group, and they kind of go out and find uh, new opportunities for us to implement Drupal with new clients. Um, and actually, increasingly, we're looking at um, talking to some of our existing clients and Try and tell them a little bit more about some of our uh, newer products. Um, so that's what our group does at a very high level. So, what's your past experience? How did you end up at Acquia? Yeah, sure. So I was uh, I was working for another tech company in the Boston area prior to coming to Acquia. They're called Wayfair. Um, they actually went public a few months ago. They're a big e-commerce company that sells um, furniture and products for the home online. They did really, really well, and that's I think where I fell in love with uh, working for rapidly growing tech companies. Um, I really wanted to get on the business to business side of things though, instead of selling things directly to consumers. Um, so I found out about Acquia actually through uh, Tom Erickson, um, kind of a friend of a friend type of situation. And I was looking at a bunch of tech companies that were also in the B2B space. And Acquia just seemed like the most exciting to me. Um, and definitely throughout the interview process, people seemed the happiest uh, being here, uh, which was very, very cool to see. Um, so, you know, Acquia, like a lot of other tech companies, I think had that kind of work hard, play hard uh, culture mentality, which is, uh, you know, typical for a lot of tech companies in general. But people just seemed happy here. And that really, really drew me in. And to be honest, coming in, I did, I did not know a ton about Drupal or open source or uh, even at a higher level about business to business uh, sales in general. So all those things kind of lured me in and have been learning and growing here ever since and had a few different roles. Chris, you've been in the tech industry for quite a while, maybe, I guess, some or all of your career. Tell me your perspectives on diversity. Uh, just as a background, I guess it's pretty well known that, uh, especially on the technical side of our industry and in open source, we have challenges. There are a lot of projects and a lot of situations that are uh, very male dominated and there are other challenges around around every flavor of diversity How, how's your feeling about the state of our industry in, from that perspective uh, yeah I mean I I definitely think it's an issue and having been in the tech space um, I mean you're you're right on um, I do think especially in business to business oriented uh, tech companies it's very heavy on uh, software engineering and the tech side of the building and very heavy on sales. And for whatever reason in tech, that does seem to be uh, dominated by specific demographics. Um, you see that quite a bit. And you, know, you, you can obviously define diversity in a lot of different ways. There's like racial and ethnic diversity, gender diversity, socioeconomic diversity. So that comes in a lot of shapes and sizes, but I do think you start to see some pretty um, consistent trends on the tech and the sales side of the building within uh, tech companies. I've definitely seen that. Um, at Wayfair, my team was 100% uh, uh, male. Um, most of the sales teams that I've been a part of here at Acquia have been 100% male. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, that does seem to permeate um, even companies like Acquia that have 
awesome cultures and, and great cultures to be a part of. Um, so I, I do think it's an issue and something that's worth combating and worth talking about. Oh, so you you preempted at least one of the questions that I had. I'm more, much more familiar with the tech side of the house in our industry. And I was going to ask you about the makeup of the, sa- the sales room. Um, specifically, today, I, I am thinking mostly about gender diversity, but I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the, the overall issue. I, I have a feeling that what we're really about in technology is, is solving hard problems and making the world a better place, mm-hmm. uh, helping people realize their visions, do whatever it is that they think will make the world a better place. Frankly, the more different backgrounds, if you have an uh, even gender split, if you have people from different places, uh, religions, ethnicities, orientations, wh- whatever ages, whatever, the, the richer the mix you can get, I think the more perspectives you have and the better the solutions are that you end up coming with, coming up with as a group. And, and I've, I've really, really believed that for a long time. And I've seen it in practice, especially in a project like Drupal, which is, which is our home base. Um, Drupal has something like 25% female participation on the technical side and, and, and really strong, wonderful leadership. A lot of the important, very important people, core committers, uh, <clears throat> Jess Mirbo, Angie Byron, Kathy Thays, Addison Berry, uh, just off the top of my head, are very, very important women in Drupal who have a huge influence over all of us and really make our project better. But let's get back to gender diversity in tech business. You were saying that um, sales rooms, in your experience, have also been traditionally quite male-dominated. Have you had any experiences where you, you really wish that it had been more balanced, or have you seen negative effects of that ever? Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, without getting too deeply into specifics, I mean, I, I think you're right on with your assessment jam. And I, I think that applies to open source communities, tech teams, as well as sales and business development teams that um, diversity in every way that you define the word um, helps breed diverse perspectives. And um, I think allows people to collaborate at a deeper level. You know, if you have 10 people on a sales team, and they all come from the same place and think the same way, then you have 10 people, but one perspective. Uh, if you have 10 people that come from different backgrounds and have different thoughts about how things work, you end up having a much richer collaboration. And I think you can come to ideas and thoughts that um, you would not have been able to come to otherwise. And so I think having been a part of teams that uh, really had no diversity to speak of and seeing the way they think, and then being a part of teams that have been diverse and seeing the ways that they think, um, I definitely prefer the, the latter. Uh, in that circumstance. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I won't get into specific issues, but I do think there are really, really concrete, tangible benefits from having teams of, uh, of diverse people, however you define the word. So let's talk about what's happened at Acquia in the last couple of months. The, the thing that got me uh, excited and, and that made me want to talk with you, we had an all company meeting in early July, and our CEO, Tom Erickson, was talking about new hires, which is a feature of our all-company meetings. And along the way that he pointed out, he pointed out that half of the new Acquia U students are women, and seven out of 12 BDRs are women. Tell us what a BDR is, what mm-hmm. you're hiring for there, and then talk about the hiring process. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Sounds great. Uh, so so BDR uh, is short for business development rep. Um, that's typically synonymous with sales development rep. Sometimes you'll hear that as account development rep. It's different depending on the company. Um, in practice, what those folks do is they're, they're reaching out to uh, new prospects, sometimes existing clients, um, and uh, informing them of what we're doing here at Acquia and how we may be able to help those guys and kind of listening to what their pains are and um, what they're looking for from digital uh, in their business, um, and then hopefully continue that dialogue to talk about how Drupal and how Acquia can layer on top of that to help those guys. Um, so they're they're often relatively junior employees, so I'd say like zero to three years of experience, and uh, they're folks who are generally looking for a path in tech sales, but we get a lot of people who are interested in other sides of the building and just want a little bit of background in business development to start out their career, or they just want a foot in the door here at Acquia, to be honest. Um, as far as our hiring profile goes, 
Um, it is a pretty complex message that we deliver here um, in a pretty complex space that we're in. So it requires that you understand a lot of different elements and you're able to react to a lot of different things. Um, so intelligence is a really, really key factor that we look for. Um, we look for folks who are coachable. Um, they're excited to take feedback. They're excited to apply feedback. Uh, and then they're excited for more feedback on the other side of that. Um, we look for people who are really, really good team players. Um, they're not folks who are overly <laughs> self-important or too proud. Um, they want to be a part of a team and they want to collaborate. And if they did something really well, they want to share that with those around them. And I think a lot of those things ultimately come back to uh, just having the DNA of a good Aquian um, and being, you know, to use a really overly used term in the tech space, being a really good culture fit. Um, that, that also seems to, I, I, I wasn't aware of all of this. I, I don't get to spend any time really with your, with your teams. That's a really, really good fit to what a lot of Drupal people are really proud of and excited mm -hmm. about in Drupal. The, Drupal is all about sharing. And, you know, if you go to a Drupal meetup or a Drupal con or a Drupal uh, camp somewhere, it's essentially like the biggest show and tell ever. And the people who are doing presentations, they learned something, they figured out how to solve a problem, and they want to share that so that everybody can solve it and, and like don't have to face that problem again. And it's this in, it's incredible feeling. So I, I really like that, uh, that, that, our, that you're looking for the same kind of person there. I, I, I didn't know that before. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's really important. And ultimately, it comes back to the culture of our organization as a whole, which is which is built on open source, built on giving back. And, you know, I, I think if we hire people that aren't practicing what they preach, then they're not going to do their job well. So I think that's a really, really important uh, component for our hiring profile for anyone who's going to be talking to potential clients or existing clients. Um, so that's all really, really important for us. Um, so that's a really, really high level profile. There's certain things that you look for for any business development or sales professional, you know, like communication skills, uh, both oral and uh, written. Yeah, you have to have that. Got to be good at that. Uh, a certain amount of competitiveness and drive that you'd look for any good Aquian, any good business development person. So uh, those are also things that we look for. Tom Erickson said that you had looked at everyone who'd been a BDR in the past. Mm -hmm. and who had succeeded and established an ideal profile of characteristics for a great BDR and mm -hmm. then created some sort of exam around that to objectively a a assess people who might be good for the job. How did you do that? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, Jim. So we, we took like 10 to 15 qualities that we thought were important to being a good business development rep. And, and ultimately being a good professional at Acquia in general. And we put that all into a spreadsheet and we scored the existing team one through 10 uh, by each one of those qualities. Um, and we had four or five people doing the scoring. So subjective, yes, but hopefully the averages between those people made it somewhat more objective. Uh, it's always going to be subjective at the end of the day. But um, we had a few different people score to make it a little bit more statistically significant. And then we looked at how the scores shook out and then tried to correlate the qualities um, to quota attainment, so the people that were hitting their goals and hitting their targets. Um, it was really, really interesting to, uh, to find the qualities that were most correlated to success here. Um, they weren't necessarily things that we were expecting. Um, and so what we did was is we built out the same score sheet for new hires here at Acquia and weighted those different qualities based on what was most correla correlated to success and correlated to quota attainment here. Um, so still went through the same exercise where people rated um, new candidates one through 10 based on these different qualities, but then we'd have those average and then weighted based on um, uh, what we'd correlated to success. Um, and so that's a big, big part of what we do to make our process a little bit more data-driven. So that's really the first step uh, in our process. Um, we also give people a, a written exercise while they're in here as well. We uh, ask a couple very, very open-ended questions, one that they can do a little bit of research on, one that they can't do research on. Um, so we get to see how they write and how they think when they have a little bit more time to breathe and a little bit of time to actually write things down. Um, I do find, especially with sales interviews and business development interviews, they really heavily uh, favor the people who are good at interviewing which aren't always necessarily the skills that um, are going to be applicable when you're actually doing the job. 
So the person who can react quickly, um, who can think on their feet, um, who can speak really well and really confidently is not always the best person for the business development job. Those are all important qualities. It's not to say the interview doesn't matter, but they tend to skew towards a certain profile. So we think the written exercise is, uh, is really important. They do uh, have a presentation as part of their interview cycle as well. So presentation, which they had to do some thinking and some research beforehand. You see a lot of different skills there. The written exercise, which is a little more ad hoc, but they have some time to do it. And then the one-to-one -one interviews, and then we score those guys based on all of that uh, information that we took in throughout the you know, two and a half, three hours that they're here. I also heard that you were very careful about setting up the, the interviews themselves. How did that work? So another thing that we were pretty careful and, and cautious to do uh, is make sure that we had a decent amount of diversity balance on the interview panel. Um, people don't mean to be biased. Um, they don't mean to skew in a certain direction, but people have natural biases that they might not even know about. And so I think it's important for us to have an even gender split uh, as diverse an interview panel as possible when we're actually talking to new people who are going to be a part of the team. Um, you know, if diversity is something that we want, we need to make sure that we're giving them a really, really fair shot, really, really fair shake. And I think the best way of doing that is making sure that our panel of people who are interviewing candidates is, is also diverse, if that's something that we're emphasizing. It sounds like you and Acquia's sales management in general has put a lot of thought into creating a process that is as objective as possible and removes biases and makes an actual effort to be very fair um, while trying to hire for people who will be able to succeed. You know, you're, you're trying to enable the people who come to Acquia to do a good job and, and, and to, to have success experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. What's been the results of that, of that hiring process, I guess, in terms of business success and in terms of, and in terms of, of, of a good gender balance? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I mean, if you look at the way that the team is composed overall now, we're, we're very, very close to a 50-50 split. Um, so if we're talking about gender diversity, we're, we're close to 50-50, which uh, I would say is uh, vastly different from other tech business development teams that I've been a part of. So um, we're, we're pretty happy about that. And I, I mean, again, Jam, you hit the nail on the head with the objectivity piece. So really the best that we can do is get as close to objective and as close to hiring the best person for every seat on our team as possible. And we think we've gotten close to that by being a little bit more data driven, by uh, giving different exercises and uh, different things to do throughout their interview process. Actually. If the result is working, um, and it sounds like it's working given that Acquia is doing all right as a business and that your team is ending up at around 50-50 gender mix. That's, that's great news. I mean, it's, um, I think the message that I'm drawing from this is if you put as objective a process in place as you can, the fact that we are hiring uh, diversely and succeeding uh, because we're trying to be data-driven and trying to be objective, that sounds like fantastic news. It sounds like uh, um, a great position to be in. Yeah, we, we definitely think so. We definitely think so. And I, I do know that some other um, similar organizations that have similar processes that are data driven and not just focused on the one on one interviews have wound up with much more of a uh, even gender split on their teams. Um, there's a few other companies, even locally in the Boston area, that use a process that's somewhat similar. And um, their net results on the other side of that is also close to a 50 50 gender split. So um, uh, you know, th this is based on my small little worldview here, but um, I do think that if you put a really, really objective process in place, that um, the world of tech sales um, actually does come closer to a 50-50 gender split um, than what we actually see happening in reality um, in the market. So um, that's my personal opinion, but, um, you, you know, who knows? <laughs> so what's your advice for other people in the industry what what are your what have you learned and and what would you suggest that other companies do yeah i mean i think having some sort of handle over what qualities are actually important um, in the profile of the person that you're hiring for is super super important because it's really really easy to intuit uh, or just 
you know, kind of guess and like say certain qualities that you think are important. Um, but I think to go through some sort of exercise where you can put a little bit more objectivity around it, uh, it could surprise you some of the stuff that uh, ends up being correlated with success. Um, so I would, uh, I guess, strongly urge people to look at their existing teams, look at who's been successful, look at the qualities that they had, and it could surprise you the things that are correlated with success. Um, so I think that's really, really important to get some handle over that. Um, and, you know, that allows you to be a little bit more data driven in the hiring process. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Hiring by its very nature, you are judging someone. So there is a certain amount of subjectivity that's always going to permeate the process without fail. But the closer you can get to objectivity, I think, uh, breeds even better results. So take an objective picture of what success looks like in the job that you're hiring for if, as much as you can. Give them multiple situations in which to shine. In our case, presentation, written exercises, and interviews. And mm -hmm. I believe the other point would be get as much of a diversity balance in your interviewer and interview panel groups as possible. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about this. I'm really, really, uh, really, really pleased we got to talk about this. And, and I'm really, really pleased that in, in our small corner of the industry, Acquia really seems to be trying to do its bit on, you know, on so many fronts to diversity um, and, and hiring practices, paying it forward, everything we've talked about. Yeah, no, Jane, it was a pleasure catching up. I, I do think it's an important subject, so I'm no, very happy to chat about it. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one. All right. Sure thing, Jim. Talk to you soon. Take care.